morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and welcome to an extra special edition of Across the Pitch. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I'm here with my co-host, Tony Robinson. Uh, we're very excited to bring uh, one of the uh, the longest-standing members of Accrington Stanley. Uh, he was uh, born in Selby, Yorkshire, still resides in Yorkshire, so it must Yorkshire. be... Yorkshire. <laughs> my American accent coming through yeah. already, but yeah. it, it must be quite a drive for you every day uh, Harvey Rogers to uh, to Accrington Stanley so the so Harvey Rogers yeah. first uh, thank you and, and welcome to the show and uh, and uh, me and Tony are really excited to talk with you today <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you too. And I'm on the drive. It's not too bad. I mean, I don't know if you're accustomed to the M62, but it, uh, there is known to be quite a few crashes on there. So one crash, and I'm 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 late. I'm texting, and I'm late. But the uh, the gaffer and Jimmy are all right with that. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit familiar. I've been on the 62 before. That's the one that goes around Manchester, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a night. It's a nightmare. I I've just. I, I've, I've just I just love Yorkshire too much to move away. Well, that's um, and that uh, was, uh, being from uh, I was born and uh, raised well, spent fifteen, sixteen years in Accrington when I was uh, when I was a young lad. Uh, so I know there was a lot of um, uh, uh, fun uh, with to be had with uh, uh, back and forth with the Lancashire Yorkshire thing. But I just wondered yeah. if if you there's some a video that popped up the other day. I don't know. If, if you've seen it, uh, Harvey or Phil, but it's called the Yorkshire Hacker. Have you seen that at all? No, the Yorkshire Hacker. No. Yeah, it's it's what? it's a few fellas outside of a pub, and uh, they do the imitation of the uh, Australian and uh, New Zealand Hacker, and they do it with Yorkshire sh- sayings like. Uh, no, no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, and it starts off with "E by gum." Um, uh, yeah, word, word me whip it word me whip it <laughs> um, and uh, how much how much <laughs> that's um, if you want, if, uh, I don't think my accent's too I don't think my accent's too strong no 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 but I just thought it was funny because when I saw that and then when I saw you were coming from Yorkshire I thought I'd mention it so you and then people when they listen to this they they want to google that it's it's quite uh, it's quite uh, uh, funny and it takes um, uh, uh, you know you look uh, Yorkshire people having a laugh at themselves which is uh, uh, yeah which it's is what good. we like to do yeah, I'll have to yeah. take a look at that yeah um, first of all before we get into anything uh, more detail uh, we watched the match the other night, and 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 you had quite a quite a blow to the to the head, and um, yeah. and and not only that, you got a, a foul against you, which I still couldn't believe how that happened. I, I thought I thought I was I still must have been dizzy when he said when I got up and he said it's a free kick for them. I was like, Are you joking? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I've um, eight stitches after the game in my eye. Wow. Um, so is it on yeah, the on pretty, the on, on your eyelid then? So is it on the right yeah, side? Yeah, just uh, yeah, on my right eyelid, just above the eyelid. So it's like just in between eyelid and eyebrow. So, but yeah, it was a pretty nasty, uh, pretty nasty gash. Now, it, um, John Cole mentioned in his uh, uh, pre-interview for the upcoming match that um, you were having trouble with your vision. Is that improving, or is that? Is that something? Yeah, no. It, it, to be honest with you, it, it has actually improved a little bit. I've been, I've been icing it and stuff, and uh, so that it, it, it has helped. So hopefully, I'll be uh, I'll be okay for Saturday. I'll just have to probably have a Terry Butcher headband on. Yeah, well, so the somebody... ice is uh, get the swelling down for you a bit. Yeah, yeah. As it says, it's worked wonders. To be honest, the ice. The ice. Well, so if I, you do. I don't worry about my looks too much, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just saw if you do, if you are able to play Saturday, then would it you you'd have to wear a, a face covering of some sort? Yeah, well, I, I've been talking with a uh, with the physios, and they're, they're not too sure what to put on it either, just because, uh, like, when you do put something on, like a headband or whatever, it, it, you can't really see anyway. So I might I might just be best off just putting the old school bit of Vaseline on and getting on with it. I know that, uh, that sometimes they have like those, uh, those clear plastic masks I've seen uh, like the basketball players wear. Has that been something you've looked at at all? 
Yeah, but then uh, yeah, it, I, 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 the thing is with them when you when I've got that, if it's rubbing against the stitches, that could that yeah. could just be as painful anyway. So, but um, I, I'll just, just have to uh, a bad it spot. It sounds like. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a bad spot, but well, I mean, he... it's my first it's my first one, so I've been pretty lucky up until now. He's a, he's a Yorkshire lad, so they're tough for, you know, coming from Yorkshire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, okay, um, Phil, I I think you wanted to talk about his uh, Harvey's early days in, with Hull. Yeah, so uh, so you were with uh, Hull until uh, 2017, and, and there was some uh, uh, really successful years uh, making to the Premier League 2012-2013 uh, for the second time, uh, FA Cup final in 2014. Uh, Steve Bruce was the manager in 2015. So you know, how much did all of that have uh, an impact on your career, and uh, you know how much did, did Steve Bruce help with the uh, the advancement of your career, um, it was definitely good being at Hull around that uh, around that time. Um, but when I went, they were just like a lower league championship team, and you could see they were building something, the new ground, and um, it, so it was it was nice to be there while they were the Premier League and all that. Um, mentioning Steve Bruce, he, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be totally honest with you, he wasn't, he didn't really have. Um, an impact on my on my career because I think we didn't really the, with the first team with like the younger lads didn't go up and train with them as much like you like to keep it separate um, so that's something that I've heard quite a lot of with Steve Bruce that he likes to he's not much like for getting the young lads involved um so it, it sounds like what one of the things that, that we've heard from a, a lot of the players at the past is that uh, if you were a guy that the manager brought in himself, that uh, that maybe you're, you're kind of on the outside looking in. So it was that kind of the situation with Bruce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it was. It's uh, when the opportunity. I think last when you under twenty ones, you. It, you just it's easy like you you want to get out and play men's football like no matter where it is so when uh, when the chance came along to to go on loan i was i was more than happy to go is that when you with uh, coming from uh, selby which i believe is south of yorkshire and sort of uh, um yeah it's near york if if you're a no yeah, sorry, is, so, York, yeah. yeah, south of York. Um, it was Hull your uh, your boyhood team, and is that why you ended up there, or how, how did you? No, no. Nah, um, just, uh, I just, and, um, we won our local league from a local team, Selby, and um, we got invited to a trial, two week trial. Me and uh, a couple of the other lads from the team, and then I, I just I signed from there, and I was there ever since I was ten. But no, I uh, I support Leeds. I'm a big Leeds fan, so. Oh, dirty leads! I, I shouldn't say dirty yeah. leads, but that's what so, they're known yeah. as. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the FA Cup draw made me uh, made me interested. So we need to win on Tuesday night. So hopefully we play Leeds in the next round. Yeah, that was a huge, huge match. I yeah. remember. Yeah. I remember the, the way I say when I said dirty leads because I remember when I was a kid. I used to go and watch Burnley when they were in the first division, and they used to play Leeds, and there was uh, Billy Bremner, uh, Peter Lorimer, yeah. uh, and they were yeah. every one of the from top to bottom were they were tough teams like when uh, tough tackling back in those days, and and Leeds were one of the prime uh, teams for that, and they got that nickname Dirty Leeds, and it's it's a pretty tough name to change. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be when and the draw. We apparently for oh the uh, yeah I, I was getting mixed up there because I was just thinking the draw. For yeah, the, two big tournaments going on right now. Yeah, and the draw for uh, the Cup of Johns is uh, Friday, Saturday afternoon. Prior yeah, to you Saturday, take the yeah. field, yes, you'll know when you take the field against Bristol who you're going to play. On a, well, I feel like that that competition. As a player, you, you like when you when it first starts, you're like, oh, it, it's not one of them that them competitions where you you it's not like it's not as good as the FA Cup basically, and uh, the League Cup like you. But once now, obviously now we've got past the group stages, you you start you start taking it like you know you you're not like many games away from Wembley, so um, so now to be just one game away from Wembley is. is it's amazing, really. Yeah, from a, a supporter. Get the job done. 
from, from a supporter standpoint, I, I think it's exactly that. The same way for us. I think that, you know, every yeah. We come in and, and we're looking at the uh, the FA Cup and uh, obviously uh, that's the big, big one. But the, the Papa John's, it does have that special thing where uh, it's, it's really the best chance to get to Wembley. And, and for Accrington Stanley, you know, that's kind of one of the boxes on uh, on John Coleman's resume there that he still wants to check off uh, is to play a game at Wembley and uh, to see you guys one, uh, one match away at this point. It, it's an exciting time to, to be a Stanley supporter and, and that tournament, it's a fun tournament and it, it would just be, a, I think, a heck of a thing to watch you guys uh, actually raise a trophy at the end. I mean, wow, that would be something. Yeah, that would be that would be some day out of that and uh, some party after as well. Well, I, I, I know the, um, the it's not doesn't have the romance of the FA Cup and to some degree the League Cup, but as you say, as, as you get further on in the tournament, I think the, uh, and, and it's been such a um, uh, uplifting, um, you know, and this is one of, one of the things I think we had later on, but we might as well touch on it now is, is it's a, that win the other night, although I know it was in penalties, but um, I think the performance, uh, you know, really, uh, especially that uh, goal, um, I think there were 14 touches in the one, the first goal by uh, Aaron yeah, uh, Presley. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you watch that. If that's on match of the day, it's played umpteen times because I know you, I don't, you touched the ball a couple of times in that, in that, in that, in that spell, didn't you, Harry? Yeah, I, uh, I nearly gave uh, Sean McConville the hospital pass, but uh, he literally got me, out, got, me, got me out of trouble there. But no, yeah, it was, it was a good move. And that, that's the frustrating thing with us. I think we know we can do it. And uh, we haven't, but we haven't, we haven't done it enough this as, like this this season. So I think the the result was important. But I think more importantly, we there was, like you said, the performance was there. So hopefully that's something to build on that. How uh, how big was it for uh, confidence in terms of the whole team having Presley come in and get two goals? Because I mean, I know that ever since uh, Matt Lowe got uh, injured, that the, the striker position has been a place where uh, you, you know you guys really haven't had uh, an experienced set guy to put in there. Uh, Presley has uh, been brought in on loan to be that guy, uh, and then having him come in it only his second time. Out and get two goals. I mean, what does that do for the confidence of the team? Yeah, I've been I've been really impressed with him, and I, I think it just shows that like it, it's useful to have someone who it's actually their position to play there. So I, I know Tommy, uh, Tommy, and Tommy's been playing there, and it, I think just be probably default from being our tallest midfielder uh, to win headers, and I think he's done a good job, but. I'd rather have him midfield. In, in midfield, and Aaron just—you can come in, and he's, he's come in, and he, you can see like how, how well he holds the ball up, and it gets us further up the pitch as well. Well, and I saw—I noticed oh, yeah. a couple of times he is, like you say, he's older playing and and distribution, and and he'll come back into uh, into his own half, uh, sort of thing, to, to get the ball to sort of pass back to midfield, and and then run into the in the lanes, and and that 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 pass from Dan Martin. Um, was you know outstanding pass, but the run was just as impressive because without the run, I mean that pass goes nowhere, and it was a it was a great finish. I thought it, 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 the whole yeah, I, I thought it was a good finish. I thought it, um, I thought it, the pass was like I thought he'd taken it too wide, and I thought oh he's he, he's too wide to finish it, here. and then it, it's, it's a lovely finish to the bottom corner. But yeah, yeah. good ball from Dan Martin as well. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. He played, I think he played really well. Yeah, I mean, how uh, how big is that for you guys to have a guy to uh, be able to hold the ball up front like that? How much pressure does that take off of uh, off the back line? Oh, I imagine that's that's so mass. much pressure. So much pressure. He, he makes well for one. He makes our bad balls look half all right, and he um, it, it's not that. It's like say when we played Derby the other week, like. You just need someone to hit and be able to hold it in and take the pressure off you. But when we played Derby the other week, we were, we were attack after attack, and it's it's, t- it's tiring, and it just feels like never ending. So it it's um, it really like refreshing to see a striker in there playing for us now. 
and and I noticed too the um, the uh, although it's only it's the second game, but I thought that game against Lincoln there was a lot of, a little bit of chemistry developing between him and, uh, and Sean Wally. They seemed to be uh, as the game got on, seemed to be more on the same page. Um, I, I think this could be something that could work there. Uh, what's your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, I I really like Sean Wally playing up front. Actually, uh, I I still can't believe he's that fast and sharp at thirty five. Like, <laughs> blows my it blows my mind. Really, he's like he's just like a little kid. Like he's just so so quick. Um, and and yeah, he, he's got that experience as well. So he he knows how to work with different people. Um, and I think yeah, I think he, he could he could play up front with anyone. Really, he's, he's, I think he's shown his class this season. And he's been a very good signing for us. So one thing, uh, before we uh, go on to our next set of questions, kind of wrap up this, one thing that we had kind of noticed is that uh, we thought that maybe with the team lacking a specific striker, that it's kind of made it hard tactically to have a direction, if you will, because there's really no set end point that you were trying to get the ball to, and now you have that. Uh, Would you say that that that's fairly accurate in terms of uh, the tactical? impact yeah yeah like well like you say it it gives us it gives us something to hit like we're sometimes like if we were going long before we we're getting pressed high and we had to kick long we all biggest respect to sean and tommy like it, it sometimes it just comes straight back so yeah it gives us it gives us different dimensions now to, and, and teams will start uh, dropping off us if they know that we're going to go long because they'll be worried about Aaron in the air so yeah, it, it's it's good to have a different something something different over there. Yeah, I couldn't help but notice that in, in the Boer match that uh, uh, the goal was conceded. Maybe it was within two minutes of Presley coming off the pitch. Do you think that you know maybe he had been giving them so much trouble that, that once he came off, that they thought that that they could take more chances? Yeah, definitely. I, I think like I, I've had it a lot of. Well, a lot, a lot of time. Where if you're playing against a good striker and you see him go off, you're you're pretty happy. Um, and I think, I, I, I mean, I think Les was uh, unlucky to come on and give away that free kick. Because I, I personally don't think it was a free kick. Um, I think he was unlucky with that, given away. I, I also, um, uh, what did you think about uh, when, when Sean, uh, they, they yellow carded him for simulation? To me, he clearly got pushed in the back. I, I thought that that should have been a penalty our way. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely seen him given. I, I, I think um, I think he had one in the previous match against Derby, which I've definitely said to him, that was a dive show. Um, but I, I think, yeah, the one against Boyle and Wood was, I've definitely seen them given. But I think if you do it, the rest the rest start looking for it, don't they? They know they know that he he's like that kind of clever player where he looks for free kicks and penalties, um, like you saw the other night against Lincoln. So refs refs are be onto him as well. Yeah, I figured that the, the refs probably do do some homework and things like that, but. Uh, yeah. Well, we, we've talked a lot of uh, you know football and tactics, but let's go ahead and, and change directions for a moment. And, and this is the, the fun part of the show, if you will. Uh, this was Tony's original invention. It started as some kind of uh, North England versus South England and is now the most popular segment of the show. So, Tony, now over to you for the world-famous Rapid Fire. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thanks for that uh, toned down introduction. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, uh, Harvey, we just asked some fun questions just to see, uh, just to change uh, change things up from uh, from football. So uh, we'll start off with the uh, the regular ones. Is um, uh, would you prefer mushy or garden peas? Ooh, uh, garden. Red or brown sauce on your bacon sandwich? Brown all day, brown. Black pudding with your full English? No, without, without. Without. See, you're York, a yeah. Yorkshire lad, a Yorkshire lad, Phil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gravy or curry on your chips? Come on, you can't ask that to me. Gravy, <laughs> gravy all day, you're a Yorkshireman. Yeah. Well, this, this. Then you'll understand the next question. This is um, for Phil, this is for more for Phil's um, benefit. Um, Yorkshire pudding with your uh, Sunday roast uh, and with gravy on it. Yorkshire pudding, yeah, yeah Yorkshire pudding, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. I'm not even sure I know what that is. And, and swim it, swimming in gravy, yeah. There's there's a place in Accrington. There's, there's a place in Accrington that does a Sunday roast, and they've served the whole meal inside a, a Yorkshire pudding, Phil. Well, I'll have that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I get over well, that. Yeah. that sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds, sounds tasty. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite band or musician? Um, I'm I'm mm, I'm gonna go Elvis. I, I watched the I watched the movie. Recently, Elvis, so. I like it. Yeah. So I've been obsessed with. I've been listening to his music all the time recently. So, uh, so when uh, Aaron came over, uh, did, did you try to nickname him? Oh, right? yeah, he's, he's, his nickname's Elvis. His nickname's Elvis already. Elvis, all right. We, yeah, we're trying yeah. to get uh, get a nickname for for every guy going, aren't we, Tony? Well, that's another thing. That. Yeah, I mean, um, that's one of the questions I actually had written down. Is uh, what? Um, uh, do you have a nickname? If so, what is it? Um, no, I don't think I do, to be honest. I don't, uh, oh. Well, I, I um, when Cam, uh, do you know, Cam Burgess and Matt, Matt, yep. Matt, uh, Matty Butcher and Colby Bishop, they all used to call me Harry. Um, for so, I don't actually know why. It just stuck. I think someone, a trialist, called me Harry uh, by accident once. So they've all just, they all just <laughs> called me Harry. And they still call me Harry now. So. <laughs> um, do you have a hobby outside of uh, football? To relax. Um, pool. Right. But, uh, so, yeah, I've got, I've, I'm in. I'm in a pool league. Uh, my mate runs a sports bar, so yeah, I'm in, I'm in a pool league, and uh, I try. I try play golf in summer, but. Well, I'm try to good. play golf. That sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think it's a lot of more, people. Yeah, I think pool is more of a social. More well, I'm saying social, but it's one one you can sort of enjoy your drink a little bit more. I think with the yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, which player uh, on the team has the best sense of humour? Um, I'm going to go for, I think, similar sense of humour, Seamus. Me and Seamus, pretty similar sense of humour. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then for silly, I'd go Josh Woods. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that through his yeah. interviews. He's very bubbly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have a Do you have a favourite takeaway? Um, have you heard of Nando's? Yes, the chicken place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, I love Nando's. I'm obsessed with it. Right. I, I guess we you... got a lot of places to try when I come over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's one in Accrington or not. To be honest with you, but I think there's one in um, Bird, which is not too far, is it? it where? Uh, what did you say, Harry? Uh, sorry, I called him uh, Harry. Uh, <laughs> Harry <Manic. laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Black, uh, Blackburn, I'm pretty sure there is one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, do you? And this is one we uh, we had a, a bit of a laugh with Doug Tharn because we asked him if if he had, and and one asked you, do you have any pre match superstitions? Um, mm, no, I don't. I've got um, I've got. I always wear the same trainers, and I've had them for three years now and I, I feel like they're like my lucky trainers now and they're pretty bad but I just keep carrying and wearing them um because so, Doug like that, yeah yeah I don't know if you noticed but Doug's told us he 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 um one when he finds out the number of the player he's marking he slaps his thigh the the same number of times that uh, of the fellow's jersey uh and he says he really just not, hopes that really yeah, he said he just hopes sometimes that he's not marking somebody f- uh, with the number forty-five. <laughs> well, I have seen him. I have seen him slap himself actually. <laughs> well, you have to see if he does it on Saturday. Well, he's not. If he's, he might be not be playing yet. But next time, next time you're playing together, watch him before the match and see if he starts uh, yeah, slapping his thighs because he told him, us. I that. have seen him slapping himself. Definitely seen him do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, the last one. I and we we try and sort of uh, find out the uh, knowledge of uh, players and if they follow a North American sports. Do you follow any any at all, uh, Harry? Harry? Mm, I'm nah, gonna call you Harvey. No, nah, I'm gonna uh, keep calling you <laughs> Harvey. It's fine. Hey, yeah. How about how about is it, is it like Prince Harry or uh, or or have you? Oh no, we don't go there. No, no, we're not. We're not. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, so, uh, no, so I, you, I don't really follow. Any, I'm, I'm more um, at golf, but no, not really. I, I watched um, the Last Dance, Michael Jordan. 
Uh, oh, nice. Great. That's a good, good documentary. That actually used to be one of the questions is if you liked uh, The Last Dance or Sunderland Till I Die better. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I haven't watched Sunderland Till I Die. I, I, um, I, I love The Last Dance. I've, I've, I've watched it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really a great one. Now, I'm, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm a Phoenix Suns fan. So, you know, in 1993, uh, Michael Jordan uh, ended our uh, our chances to had a title there. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember them playing them, actually, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I think I was... Who played for the Phoenix Suns then in the, in the doc, from the documentary? Well, well, Charles Barkley would have been the, the most famous Phoenix Suns player at that time. And then they had Kevin Johnson. They had uh, Dan Marley. Uh, those are probably uh, Tom Chambers. I'm just going to name it the guys who, who had been to Even them. I, I've never heard of them, Phil. Well, uh, I'm they, thinking of uh, uh, Malone, but I, 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 that must have been someone. He must have played for someone else. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, I, that, thanks, uh, thanks, Harvey, for for doing that. Anyway, that's, I'm back over to you, Phil. For let's get back into some football. Well, well, let's first uh, let, let's go ahead and do uh, another segment on the show for uh, uh, the chairman of the Accrington Stanley Supporters Trust, uh, Peter Latham. Uh, Peter is the one who uh, sets up these interviews for us, which we very much appreciate. Uh, and he always sends in a few questions for us to uh, to ask. Uh, we call this segment Peter's Corner. Uh, so for Peter's Corner, the first question he had asked was, do you think you're your career would have progressed quicker if you'd come back to Stanley with leaving Hull rather than signing with Fleetwood. Um, I think, yeah, I definitely think it would have done. Yeah. Um, I mean, looking back on it, I, I, I definitely should have um, come to uh, come back to Akron. But when I was younger, like I, I got offered, I think what it was, I got, I'll be honest, it got offered a bit more money and it was a higher league and, so you just you take the opportunity while you can, and I thought I was going to go there and play, but obviously I never I never played a, a, in the league there with Fleetwood, so that definitely hindered my career. But well, I think that just, you that's you, football, and that sometimes happens. Well, like you said, I mean, I, I think you have to take the opportunities when they were there, and and perhaps the the flip side of it is maybe not taking that chance then, and, and seeing that maybe the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Maybe that was a, a yeah, good definitely. point in your career to kind of uh, see that, and, and then be able to come back to Stanley. And uh, I, you know, we're definitely happy to have you as part of the squad. I, I don't know if we mentioned this, but uh, uh, on a, a our Christmas preview episode uh you were uh, pretty much our, our consensus for player of the season so far uh and that's not just because of your, your goals but, <laughs> but your uh, your plus minus uh we'll, we'll get into that a little bit uh, but one thing we wanted to ask is or and this is also from peter's quarter uh peter had with matches coming hey. thick and fast how fast hey. do you recover oh. and recharge in days between oh. matches um, I'm I'm pretty good to be honest recovering touch wood but um, like it, I can't really work it out like some sometimes I'll have a game on a Saturday and uh, I'll be fine on the Sunday and then sometimes sometimes I'll have a game on a Saturday and then the next day I'm I'm stiff and I can't hardly walk so I I don't really I don't really know how it works to be honest with my body but I, I'm I always get myself going for a game so I must recover okay. Yeah, I think that uh, you know, especially with all the uh, the extra cup games and things like that, that, that it's even more important. And you know, with the the injuries that that the squad has had, that that's probably made the uh, the burden even more so because uh, maybe when you would have normally gotten a match off, uh, you're you're having to to step in and, and cover for somebody who's injured. Yeah, but yeah, that that's something you want to do. You you want to play as many games as possible. Um, being a footballer anyway, you, you don't want to be rested or anything like that. I know that, that that's not really a, um, an issue for us lads in League One because we our squads are massive and like I know the Premier League that they, they rotate all the time. So, but I'm more than happy to play every game I'm available for. So, 
So, so you want to you want to play every game, every uh, match, you know, even if it's group stage with Papa John's, you want to be out there. Oh, I don't know, I don't know about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm only joking. Yeah, <laughs> just in case the managers watch it and listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've got uh, two more from Peter's corner here, and uh, these are Peter's words, not ours. He says, "As one of the older hands in the back line, are you able to help guys like Ryan and Doug as they come to terms with League One?" Um, yeah, I, I feel like I am. I feel like um, I'm a pretty. Uh, I feel like I got, I've got a pretty good relationship with both Ryan and Doug. And I'd like to think that they've uh, taken a few things from me. Um, I'm not sure if they'll tell you that, but I'd like to think that they have. Um, I'd say more so Ryan than Doug. Cause I feel like Doug's played men's football. He's been at Southport and he, he'll have learned a few, uh, quite a bit from lads there. So, But I'd like to think that Ryan's learned quite a bit off me. Well, I think that you guys have really come together well at a quick time and that, that the chemistry is really, uh, really shown. And then the uh, the last question here from Peter's Corner, and, and this is a bit of a uh, ingest question. He, he wants to know, uh, when do you think your current goal drought will end? <laughs> uh, soon, hopefully. Hopefully against Leeds, if we, play, if we get to play it. Um, no, I, I mean... I don't know where that came from, that run of goals, um, but um, I, hopefully I'll score again soon. I keep getting myself in the box and hopefully uh, get another couple of chances. Well, we're looking well, for yeah, I mean, a you, little celebration for sure. Your your five goals yeah. all this year, I mean, and you had the two in the one match. And and, and I know we uh, you've been asked this before, but um, where the heck did that goal celebration come from? Uh, I think you probably know more than me, to be honest. I, um, <laughs> I don't actually know. I, the, the goal against Peterborough, I, I, I honestly could not tell you what, why I did that. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I, w- I was wanting to do like um, a, a Robbie Keane, who used to play for Leeds, did a little uh, tipple over and a gun fingers. Uh, I wanted to do yep. that celebration, but it, that kind of left my mind and I just soft went above my head. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And, 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 and you, you, uh, you must get some stick from the from the lads, but it's one you can't you can't you can't uh, drop it now, can you? No, no I've, I've yeah, I've had quite a lot of um, comments about it. I mean, Sean uh, Sean McConville said that his son were doing it uh, the other week when he scored. <laughs> so you're getting people imitating. That's that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to I wanted to touch on is the back four uh, and the back line. That I mean, at the beginning of the season, there was uh, it was was penned out totally different than what it has been, and 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 injuries has really sort of um, uh, not only decimated the team but the, the back line as well to the point where uh, Sean has has been playing uh, a centre back there um, uh, recently. Um, how? Um, and you played you played all really all all along the the the, the back line. Um, do you have a preferred position, or are you just happy to be playing there and you'll take any position on the back that the the, 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 the gaffer wants? Well, yeah, I, I've got to play where I'm told to play. But uh, I, if I would, I, if I did have a preferred position, it would be like where I'm playing around now, like uh, in a back three. Um, I enjoy playing in a back three, either left or right. I'm not bothered. Um, I much prefer playing there to left back or right back. But um, yeah, like you say, with the injuries and stuff, like, I'm more than happy to fill in anywhere um, and muck in, really. So, yeah. So I think with with Mitch being out um, and um, uh, is back three may be more suitable to the to the men the the players that are available and and that sort yeah. of, sort of, that would sort of suit what you're what you're looking at then. Yeah, yeah. I've, um, <clears throat> I'll say I've been playing in the back three for the last well, maybe like 10, 10 games now, and I, I feel like I've I've probably played my my better part of the season. It played well. I've definitely had my best game of the season playing in a back three so um, I feel like that is my best position but obviously when um, <clears throat> Big J and Knots are back like, it's hard for me to fight for my spot so I've just got to keep hopefully playing well uh, so I keep my spot when the, when the boys get back Now how, how far is uh, uh, Nottingham away? Is he pretty close? 
yeah, he's he's pretty close. He was training. He was training today. Uh, he says he says he's uh, miles off it, unfit, unfit. He says he's unfit. So uh, it'll probably take him a few weeks to get back up to fitness. But I think uh, he'll, he'll be he'll be back before you know it. I reckon. Which so is a all... big big uh, big bonus for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, what a what a signing he turned out to be. Uh, I mean, it's um, <laughs> yeah. it's. Um... You know, too early to expect them back for these next uh, cup games. I I would I would assume. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I think I don't I don't think Doug's far away. Doug, Doug could be uh, next next week, maybe next uh, maybe not Boreham Wood, but the week after Saturday after, um, and then I'd say not maybe <sighs> I, I wouldn't. I'd say he probably need three three weeks of training or so, two or three weeks of training. So. Um, we we just and, and I mean we got to touch on this because of the way w- where Stanley sits in the uh, in the table right now. Um, yeah. But the you know the you've got a couple of games in hand. Um, you come off a, a, a morale boosting win at Lincoln, and that's the second time this season you've had. Uh, you went to Lincoln after a bad run in October, uh, got a draw, and it lifted the team. Um, and and that seems to have happened again, and and that's really come at an important time because you've got not only you've got the League One match on on Saturday against Ro- Bristol Rovers, uh, and then the replay against Bournemouth. So two big tough tough matches coming up, yeah. but and a, a, a different um, uh, a different scope to both of them, right? Yeah, well, I, I said uh, I did say the other day uh, I, I like playing at Lincoln because every time we seem to go there, we seem to get a good result, and it, it seems to be an important time. And uh, but yeah, the game on Saturday is massive, much more important than the FA Cup game in my eyes, because um, I think it's uh, it's important that we get away from the bottom, and because like, we know we, well, we we believe we're too good to be down there, but so we need to start showing that. So uh, I think Saturday is a massive, massive game, probably the biggest game of the season so far. And then Tuesday, which we know that if we win, we've possibly got a Premier League team in the next round, so that's all the incentive that you need. So well, and, and, gonna two wins. Yeah, because I know um, the um, uh, the rest of the January fixtures. You're playing, I think, three teams, and they're all in the top six, and that's, yeah, that's going to be a good, yeah. uh, uh, going to be a good test for you. And then I'm not saying February is, uh, is an easier month because uh, you know to quote John Coleman, there's no easy easy uh, uh, matches in League One. Um, but if you can come through. Um, January with some points uh, that's got to be a big morale booster for for uh, for the team going into February right yeah I think we I think we I think Saturday's a must win and then after that like you say we played tough, we're playing tough teams we're playing Barnsley but we, we we drew with them at home and how, well I'd say maybe yeah I think we did deserve a point um, and then we um, we've got Plymouth at home which Plymouth, they're obviously flying high, but it's it's a tough place to come to Accrington, and hopefully it'll be a nice, cold, wet night for him to come down and uh, <laughs> come up and yeah. hopefully be able to get get something from the game. Cool, so, yeah, cool Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I wonder too now because of the fact they haven't had, you haven't had a win at uh, the Wham since uh, Morecambe in uh, October. Know, yeah, someone told me that the other day. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, so that's not something that the players would dwell on. I mean, it doesn't. I shouldn't have brought it up, but is that something that the players think about? No, no, it's not really. I think. Well, I think last year we we were really good at home. I, I, I can't really remember us losing many games at home, but then we couldn't we couldn't even get a result away from home. So, and I think this year we've just been we've been just as bad at home as away. So. Um, hopefully we can turn our home form around because I think if we do that, that will it'll, it'll definitely keep us up. Well, I think that, uh, that one of the biggest things that, that I wanted to, to kind of mention to you, uh, I'm, I'm kind of the stat guy, if you will, which I, I know it's a very uh, American thing compared to, uh, to England, and uh, we're really into our stats over here. Uh, but one thing that I really like to look at uh, in terms of defenders uh, is something called the uh, the plus-minus ratio. Uh, and what that basically it measures is how many 
many goals that the team is scoring while you're on the pitch versus how many goals the team is shipping while you're on the pitch. Uh, and I, you by far uh, have the best ratio on the team uh, of any of the regular players. They uh, they do a, an on-off percentage where it's basically it, it rates it out over 90 minutes and it's basically how likely the team is to score or concede uh, with you on the pitch i basically you could either be a plus or a minus and obviously you want to be a plus i did the further above zero that you are the the better Uh, so right now you're at a plus 1.57 and out of the other regular players the next highest of the team is tommy lee at 0.66 so i mean you're just uh you're far away how how that how that's come about well, well it's it's because, you know what, you know, uh, you know what uh, RV, you, you need to have Phil on your side when you go into contract negotiations. I know, yeah. Do you fancy uh, be my agent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, kudos to you on that because in addition to the goals that you've scored, uh, those numbers are something I really look at, and that was the reason I saw you as a player of the year for for Accrington so far. Uh, thank but you. Uh, thank you. That's nice to hear that. Well, absolutely. And in addition to your contributions this year, I mean, uh, as far as I my memory serves me, uh, other than, than Sean and Seamus, you, you've really been uh, uh, with Stanley just about as long as anybody else on the club. And you, uh, uh, you had played uh, in... You came over in 2017 on loan. Uh, so, so why don't you just tell us a little bit about your, your first days and uh, experience with Stanley? Because we didn't really touch on that yet at all. No, well, um, it actually came about me going there because the, um, the gaffer went to go what came to watch um, a striker for Hull under 21s um, against Man City in, the, in, in a cup. We were playing um, and uh, I, I scored in the game. So I think he's seen me there and he was like, oh, I'll, I'll take him as well. So hey. that's, how the loan came, that's, yeah, that's how the loan came about. Uh, that that then, works out. Yeah, well, I, I went over and I, I think for the first four or five games, I, I didn't really play. Um, and I was like, oh, I want to go back. I want to go back. And I think we got beat 4-0 by Cheltenham. And I was like, right, if I don't play next week, I'm, I'm asking to go back like young lads um, and, uh, but yeah I, I, luckily I got my chance um, against Carlisle I think it was at home and um, we I think we drew 1-1 but I, I played really well and then from then I never really looked back um, then it was a really good experience really good experience Play. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, had uh, 19, uh, 19 starts that year when you were only nineteen years old, and you were yeah. you were a plus minus whiz for, from day one because <laughs> with with, <laughs> with you on the pitch that year, uh, Stanley scored twenty nine goals and only conceded seventeen. So you were a plus twelve, which is just a, a huge number for for only nineteen games played. Yeah, and I, that, I remember uh, we we came over and we were we were. Uh, when I when I came in the team, we we went on a really good run. So I think we were near the bottom when I came in, and then I think we ended up like nearly having a little bit of a playoff push. Yeah, and uh, and then the uh, the following year, and this is the last question I had for you before I'm going to turn things back over to Tony. Uh, is so so you only played in five matches the following year. You, you did go over to Fleetwood, and then uh, with uh, Stanley, you played five matches uh, on that League Two Championship team. What was it to be around a championship team and just have that experience of being in the locker room so early in your career? Oh, it, it was it was brilliant, and um, obviously I, I came back and I I played a few games when I came back, but myself I wasn't anywhere near where I wanted to be. Like I wasn't I wasn't fit enough, um, so I didn't, didn't. That's probably why I didn't play as much as I wanted to. Um, you were still a plus one, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was still it was still, a, it was still a really good experience, and. Um, uh, the night we had celebrating and stuff uh, that will always stick with me. We uh, we went away to Portugal as well after, and uh, so, yeah, it was really good. Uh, I, I still look back, uh, still got the medal and stuff at home, and yeah, it's something that will always stick with me. Well, well, thank you, and back to you, Tony. What else did you have for us? 
Harvey today, Jody? Well, I just, we touched, uh, jokingly, we said about the, uh, uh, you should help uh, pass on this information for his contract and negotiations. I, I, I guess you're out, uh, are you out of contract this summer, uh, uh, Harvey? And if so, is there anything on the way to, for a new contract yet? No, no I, I, well, yeah, I'm, I'm out of contract this this summer, um, but no, not nothing, nothing has been, nothing has been said yet. So, I, 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 the, the, it's um, the balls in the death Akron's court as as, it, as such. But um, no, I, I'm, I'm open minded to stay in, and um, I, I, obviously, I enjoy, I enjoy playing for Akron, and uh, so yeah, I just have to see, see what happens. Well, you get uh, Phil on your case when you when they <laughs> when they approach you, and it should be a slam dunk <laughs> to use to use Phil's the basketball reference. But um, I think um, you know your your play has improved. Uh, you know, uh, really uh, every season that we've seen you. And this year, I think as, as Phil has mentioned, your value to the team, uh, your versatility on that back line is uh, is really been uh, uh, second to none. And um, um, I, I just think um, you'd be a natural to sign, and we certainly push for you to hopefully continue your career with uh, with Stanley. But um, you know, and, and and you know, for Yorkshire Fell, you're a pretty decent bloke, so we will put that down. In, in a positive. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I, I, I can actually I, hear the Lancashire accent in in your accent a little bit. Yeah, well. I, it, it, you know, it comes and goes. Uh, uh, well, when I'm back over for, um, yeah, I'll tell you, he was over in England for what it was it eight eight weeks, and yeah. uh, I, I tell you about the the fourth or fifth week I got on the phone with Tony, and he he said that he couldn't even tell he was Canadian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, a few pints, and it, it, but it's it's the surrounding you're in, so you come back and you get with your mates and a few pints, and, yeah, and the accent yeah. comes back. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, but I had I did have uh, relatives in uh, Eckman White, which I think is uh, part of uh, uh, Leeds, is it not? I don't know if you know the area not at all. In, in, where, sorry? Eckman White. Oh, I don't, I don't, I can't, I haven't heard of that. Well, well, it knows. Is, is, is it a village or? It, I think it it's just a little village, yeah, and I think it's yeah, south it of Leeds a, a bit. Village. Yeah, and because uh, they had a toffee shop, and I used to remember going, and they always got a selection box at Christmas from them. But anyway, uh, that's a sidebar. But um, yeah, we wish you um, all the best for uh, the rest of the season. Uh, we uh, you. hope you get your, you know, you're healthy enough and strong enough, and and, uh, and hopefully we see you on Saturday. But um, so we all want you to see. We want obviously uh, success in the league, and the and the, uh, uh, you know it'd be nice to see you play Leeds at at the Wham Stadium uh, in the next round, and uh, and hopefully get to Wembley. There's a lot on the go, uh, and I think there's oh, a lot there of positives. Is. Yeah, a lot of positives to take, and I, and uh, just want to thank you for your time uh, and uh, spending some uh, spending some time with us this afternoon it's, no, been, a it's, been, it's been my pleasure it's been my pleasure guys thank you well, yeah, you're not yeah, nervous absolutely. now. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, uh, and I just wanted to say, you know, we uh, here at Across the Pitch, one thing we always talk about is we're trying to uh, build a puzzle, if you will, and put together the jigsaw puzzle that is the history of Accrington Stanley, not just the current side, but also, uh, you know, everything that's happened from 1968 forward to get you guys to where you are now, even what happened with the, the first team and, uh, you know, you've been a big, big piece of that puzzle. I mean, this is now the uh, seventh season that you've been a part of with Accrington Stanley. I just uh, cannot thank you enough for your uh, your contributions, and we really, uh, you know, hope that uh, that you'll be with Stanley for a long time to come because uh, you know we we definitely like having you on the back line, and we thank you so much for taking the time to come on to uh, cross the pitch with us today. Thank you. No worries, guys. Thank you. And we always like to finish up with uh, an on Stanley on. So if everybody's ready, I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. On Stanley on. Stanley on. Stanley on. <laughs> Thanks, cheers. Harvey. Thanks, Harvey. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks, Tony. All the best. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.